ordination of Robert Alex Jensen. Today, two congregations gathered together to ordain Alex. Mission Peak UU Congregation of Fremont, California, and First Parish in Wayland, Massachusetts, where I am gathered with a handful of colleagues, an intern committee, and most importantly, Alex's family. As we begin this service, I invite each of us to take a deep breath in and out, and to bring yourself more fully into this sacred time. This happens once for Alex, and it is such a joy to be here today celebrating his ministry. For this hour, may we fully welcome in joy, in the joy of Alex's ordination, of our affection and respect for Alex, and of our own love of religious community. Now please hear the voices of others bidding us welcome. Good afternoon. My name is Greg Ward and I serve the Mission Peak Unitarian Universalist Congregation where Alex first felt the call to community. And it is my honor to bid you welcome to this joyous occasion. Welcome to this delightful celebration as we of First Parish in Wayland join with Mission Peak to ordain Alex Jensen. On behalf of First Parish and of Alex's intern committee, we share our pleasure at participating in this special ceremony with all of you. Hello and welcome to the attendees of Alex Jensen's ordination into Unitarian Universalist Ministry. My name is Carter Smith, and to me, Alex is a dear, dear classmate, colleague, and friend. If you welcome everyone to the ordination of Alex Jensen. My name is Reverend Adam Lawrence Dyer, and I bring you greetings from the entire First Parish in Cambridge community. We are so thrilled to have been part of your journey into ministry, and we are so, so very proud of you on this magical day. Hello and welcome from Reverend Jeremy Nickel and all the good people of the Unitarian Universalist Church of Boulder, Colorado. I am Axel Gehrman. And I'm Elaine Gehrman. We're the co-ministers of the Unitarian Universalist Church of the Monterey Peninsula. And we welcome you to this joyous occasion. And we bring greetings from all of the Unitarian Universalists here in Monterey. Welcome everyone to the virtual ordination of someone whose ministry is always in person, face to face, full of life and love and generosity. Welcome Alex and welcome to this glorious day. It is my great honor as a trustee of our Unitarian Universalist Association to bring you greetings from our more than 1,000 member congregations in North America and around the world. Each congregation celebrates with you this afternoon as we join together to formally recognize and invest you with spiritual authority. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Reverend Howard Dana from First Parish in Concord, Massachusetts. Welcome to this wonderful celebration, this ceremony of ordination for Alex. So glad to be here, glad to be sharing this time with you this afternoon and looking forward to our worship service together.
Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Greg Ward, and I am one of the ministers who followed Howard Dana and Jeremy Nichol, uh, and along with Barbara Meyer, served the Mission Peak Unitarian Universalist congregation where Alex grew into his call. It is a tremendous honor and privilege to be here with you. It is imperative before we begin to recognize those who came before us, those whose labor and wisdom, tradition and promises kept and prepared this place that we would one day emerge, be sustained by and granted a sense of belonging and true purpose. We who gather are of many people. Those here from the modern tribe of Mission Peak, were preceded by the Mwakma people of the Ohlone tribe. In Wayland, it was into the ways of the Pawtucket, Massachusetts, and Nymphmuth people that you trace your geographic origins. And those with us from Grand Traverse region of Michigan, it is into the land of the Ottawa, Ojibwa, and Badawadami tribe that you are our people come to be known by not just common land, but by common customs and mannerisms, the blood we share, the sacrifices made, and the love that is from the sacrifice. So it is that we call forward the ancestors of Alex's sacred traditions and journey, those who prepared him for this moment. I speak especially of his grandfather, Carl Bouvier and his uncle, Brian Bouvier, and his grandparents, Bob and Jan Jensen. As ministers, whether lay or ordained, it is imperative that we all learn to see with more than our eyes, but with our heart and the intuition of prophecy handed down to us. It is our turn to speak the truth that recognizes those people, these people, as our people. Long ago, it has been described in numerous traditions that the great leaders of powerful nomadic tribes went forth from their familiar home fires so as to explore and learn from the vast world that surrounded them. They did this on behalf of their people that they may gain knowledge and wisdom about their shared purpose and discover how to lead the people they loved into their calling. But as they did, they learned an important truth, usually the hard way. And that truth was that when they got too far away from their people or they were gone for too long, their people no longer recognize them as leader. Peering out across the plains, across the great mist of time and space that settles upon our footprints, it was difficult for tribes to recognize their long lost leaders, and it was difficult for those leaders to recognize their people. It was because distance became so great and connection and common customs became less pronounced that one side or the other released waves of aggression instead of gestures of hospitality in the name of protection instead of the name of connection. We do this still today as communities. We do this still today as individuals. We light this chalice today that we may see with our heart and our mind, as well as the deep prophetic intuition that unites us, that we are all deeply, inextricably connected across space and time. And so that we all know for certain, we are all one people. Blessings. Call for 
I want to begin by congratulating Robert Alex Jensen. Well done, my friend, well done. I also want to congratulate the First Parish of Wayland and my colleague, Reverend Stephanie May, in being part of Alex's journey. I know that he's received so much from you and that you in turn have received so much from him through this bizarre time so many gifts. I'd also like to, con uh, to congratulate the UU Congregation of Grand Traverse in Traverse City, Michigan. You are welcoming a spectacular minister into your lives and legacy. And I'm thrilled to witness where this relationship goes. Lastly, and maybe most importantly, I'd like to congratulate Mission Peak UU Congregation of Fremont, California, who I know from my own time at Mount Diablo UU in Walnut Creek, California, when I recognized that Alex comes out of that community and that tradition of youth empowerment, I'm not at all surprised about how he has grown into the dynamic minister he is today. Mission Peak, you were the spark that first lit the fire of Alex's ministry, and we must all be grateful for that. I would also like to thank God, the spirit and the heavens for bringing us together, for allowing us to be together in this space, to be together virtually as well. This has been a test of gathering for us for the last many months, and we're showing that we can survive and thrive. So as I get started, I'd like to offer a factoid that may first seem wildly out of place, but stay with me. Most people don't realize that blood is a connective tissue. Like skin and like various other membranes of our bodies, blood is actually a continuous entity that functions because of its connectivity. When we bleed, our blood is in essence torn. And I wanted to begin with this image because it speaks directly to an important foundational aspect of ministry. Not only is our blood a tissue and not only is it torn when we bleed, but our blood, indeed our whole vascular system, has an intelligence that, may take, that we take for granted. Unitarian Universalists tend toward the cerebral and less toward the coronary, more toward the mind 
than the heart. Even though we all speak regularly about hearts and minds, I don't know if we completely believe that. Our big human brains like to make themselves super important. Meanwhile, the heart just keeps beating and our blood keeps flowing and literally keeping us alive. Our blood knows that we want to live. There's a kind of blood brain. I'm convinced that one reason so many of us are so very emotional when we see another harmed is that our blood brain feels it. We cannot see another human being punched, cut, strangled, or shot without feeling it in our own blood. Ministry is born of this blood brain. Ministry is a response to when the blood tissue of life is torn or when it witnesses other blood tissue being born being torn. Ministry cannot just watch idly. Ministry comes from a response to the depths of who we are, how we are connected by the life force, the blood of humanity. And Alex, ministry comes from this depth within you. Never forget that. The task of ministers today is daunting. How to stay relevant in a world that wants you to be obsolete. A world that more and more leans away from the blood brain and toward literally artificial brains. How does a new minister whose greatest gift is that intuitive, tender place that is both light as a feather in its touch and solid as granite in a mountain in its sureness, how does that find a place in this world? That new minister must be resourceful and creative, open and wise. Yes, you must be a master of technology. Yes, you will have to learn healthcare policy and immigration law and housing language and all the other things that go with supporting a congregation within a denomination that is committed to justice. And Lord, yes, you will have to manage congregants and staff. But don't forget the blood brain and the heart. One of the most dramatic ways in which our blood is torn is through conflicts over race. Alex, you are moving into ministry at a time when some of the most important skills you must bring with you are related to how you navigate the tears in the human fabric that have come from legacies of race and racism. And because this is such a crucial part of where your ministry is already taking you, I have to make note that the number of white men who have had black people offer their ordination sermons in Unitarian Universalism over the last 200 plus years is, I imagine, not very large. White men have dominated this faith for centuries, yet white men are being challenged today in their authority, their place, and their voice. And this raises a question. And it's a question that I may be uniquely poised to ask in this moment. What does a new white male minister need or want to hear from a black colleague? I believe he needs to hear history. It needs to be a nuanced history that is more than a steady celebratory diet of Channing, Emerson, Parker, and such, more than the martyrdom of Reeb and Liuso, but also the history from my and other colleagues of color's perspective that knows that being an abolitionist didn't mean someone wasn't anti-Black, that Asia is a continental location and not a single culture, and that one can be both white and Latinx. At the same time, a white minister cannot just hear this history of broken promises and locked doors, pursuits of race purity and dealing with Negro and Asian and woman problems, segregated pews and the thinly veiled racism defending freedom of speech and individual rights. A white minister in Unitarian Universalism needs to hear the words of Lydia Mariah Child who wrote 
in the early 19th century of the total humanity of black people and women when even our most sainted of UU ancestors would not. A white minister needs to know of other white ministers who put real relationships before race or cultural comfort and educational pedigree in order to listen first to native and indigenous people without feeling it necessary to put forth white solutions. He needs to know that not all white people are bad and wrong and not all people of color are good and right, but that people are human beings first. And yes, black lives matter. He needs to know that the awesome and twisted responsibility of the elusive thing that we call beloved community is possible. And speaking of possibilities, I believe that a white male minister needs to hear from a black colleague that trust between people of color and white people in this faith and in this world is possible and that it is not easy. It is trust that must be carefully and fully conscious in how it is cultivated, recognizing that we are both and all in this stew of the American Race Project. And it is trust that must be recultivated and recalibrated over and over again. In the magical land of race, there are fields of battle and fragrant, peaceful pastures. But he must know that even in the most verdant bucolic of meadows, there will always be crap that gets stepped in. Because, well, life. A white male minister needs to know that before he is either white or male, you are a minister. And that is a place of huge responsibility, catastrophic terror, wild vulnerability, deep humility, exquisite joy, and euphoric peace all at the same time. Good luck. <laughs> and all of that brings me back to where I started this. Blood is a connective tissue. It can and will be torn in this lifetime. Blood lives and fe feels and is driven by the heart. Ministry is born of the blood brain. It is both fragile and powerfully life-giving. In a world where we are increasingly alienated from our blood brains, where we are witness to the constant and wanton tearing of our fellow human beings' bodies, and where the concept of race was manufactured as a barrier in defiance of how we are connected as human beings by our blood. Ministers have their work cut out for them. And Alex, you have your work cut out for you. But Alex, through all of the identities you hold, through all of your unique and individual complexity, you are up to this task. Not because of those identities and not because you are superhuman. You are no great white hope. There is no such thing. You are up to this task because of what I and your mentors and the congregations of Mission Peak and Wayland that have loved you and the new congregation in Traverse City that is already learning to love you because of what all of us recognize in you in the ways in which you are more human, more humble to the delicate miracle of being. You are up to this task because you have gifted us so freely with the precious clarity of your pure and joyful and funny and fully human heart. Blood is connective tissue. It has a brain. It is coursing through each of us at this moment. It is filling us with pride and emotion as we usher you, Alex, into this place of ministry. It is the smartest, most adaptable, most compassionate brain any of us has. It is also capable of being torn 
by both physical harm and emotional heartbreak. Most of us don't listen closely enough to the blood brain, but Alex, you do. It is natural for you. It is why people gravitate to you and believe in you. Hold on to that, gently. Minister to the torn blood of this world with your mighty heart. Through your ministry, you have the chance now to be part of what will heal even a small part of this vast world in life and in love. Blessings on you and your ministry. Amen. In 1988, Unitarian Universalist General Assembly established the Living Tradition Fund and requested that the ordination and installation services held in member societies include an offering to the fund. Over the years, that request has become a tradition amongst us at ordinations into ministry, and we are doing it today. The Living Tradition Fund provides three types of support for ministry, need-based scholarships for theological students who have completed a full year of theological education, new minister assistance to reduce the burden of high educational debt and repayment, and grants to ministers for emergency assistance. I'd like to relate a story about what the Living Tradition Fund means. It was told by the Reverend Dr. Matthew Johnson last year at the service of the Living Tradition at General Assembly. He explained that one year he had sat at a table with a group of ministers during a meeting at General Assembly. These were all people he admired, vibrant, excellent ministries with great reputation. And the topic of the Living Tradition Fund came up. He shared a story with them about when he was in personal and financial straits and received a gift from the fund. He felt seen and loved and laid down and wept because of the generosity of the fund. And then what happened next was that every single minister at that table told a story like that. When they fought cancer, when their son was sick, when their spouse got laid off, when they made a hard choice because of their integrity and it had consequences. I know minister friends of mine who have gone through hard times due to illness or death in the family and in the mail, comes a check, a sacrament, really, a visible sign of love. And like many, they wept with those ministers with the heart, heartache and mercy that they carried forward. The money given at an offertory such as this can come to the ministers in, when they most need it. I personally know ministers, friends of mine who have gone through hard times and have received a check. This past year, ministers have been reinventing how they do church on the fly. They have loved you fiercely. They leaned hard on each other for wisdom and help, and many of their incomes are now precarious. Some will take reduced hours, pay cuts, or be unemployed. They have not been in person to raise money in person for this fund, but they need, the need has never been greater. So right now, please be as generous as you can. You can give to support the ministry in several ways. You can send a mail check either to the office at Mission PQU or First Parish Wayland with the word Living Tradition Fund in the memo line. And those of you who would like to mail a check and are not already connected to either community can mail checks to First Parish in Wayland, 225 Boston Post Road, PO Box 397, Wayland Mass, 01778. You can drop off checks as well through the mailbox, and you can also text a, don a donation to 833-264-0104 or through the Give Plus app. You can also donate on either congregation's website. Just be sure to note Living Tradition Fund in the notes and we'll distribute the funds accordingly. Your generosity helps to strengthen the support of our professional ministry. Thank you for supporting the living tradition of ministry.
In the living tradition of Unitarian Universalism, the authority to confer ordination lies wholly with individual congregations. It is an especially profound and joyous occasion for a congregation to recognize one who has answered the call to ministry as their life's work. The act of ordination bestows the authority of religious leadership, the title of reverend, and the privilege to wear a stole. This act of ordination will forever bind together Alex Jensen, Mission Peak Unitarian Universalist Congregation, and the First Parish in Wayland, weaving stronger the interdependence of our shared existence. Alex. We have recognized your calling to the Unitarian Universalist ministry. You heard your call while you were a teenager at Mission PQU in Fremont. And your call has only flourished with your ministry at First Parish in Wayland. Your call deepened with the UU Urban Ministry in Roxbury as chaplain for the Believe in Success Domestic Violence Support Program and your role as chaplain in the summer during the pandemic at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center in Boston. Because of your spiritual formation, academic study, practical ministry skills, you have received the recommendation of the Ministerial Fellowship Committee of our association and have entered into preliminary fellowship. Now, in this sacred moment and by the authority of our congregations, it is our privilege to ordain you. Alex, are you ready to accept the responsibilities, the joys, the privileges, and the burden of ordained ministry in this Unitarian Universalist tradition? Yes, I am. Will you love and serve your neighbor as yourself? Will you love kindness and bring with yourself gentleness in each step? Will you commit yourself to the cause of dismantling injustice and oppression as they appear within yourself, your communities, and in society at large? I will. Will you take upon yourself a spirit of unrest, a spirit of affliction, until justice, freedom, and liberation flow like tranquil streams? Will you cherish moments of holy respite 
and rest, observing breaks to renew and refresh your spirit? I will. Will you cultivate beloved community in your ministry and life, looking toward it with each breath you take? Will you help others to taste and glimpse beloved community both already in the, in the here and now and also on the horizons of our own knowing? I will. Will you help life to flourish, steward this sacred earth and serve the God of your understanding all the days of your life? I will. Will the members of the first parish in Wayland and Mission Peak Unitarian Universalist Congregation Please make ready to affirm this ordination. With this rite, we acknowledge our own calling to be engaged and active partners in our covenantal tradition, to be in relationship with others, to be in community in times of ease and in times of difficulty. We affirm our own commitment to the shared ministry of our Unitarian Universalist faith our community and our world. Members, please unmute yourselves. Now to answer this question. Are we prepared now to renew these? We are. 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 Yes. We are. We are. We are. I think they are. <laughs> <laughs> that would be to renew the responsibilities and confer ordination upon Alex. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. With joy, we affirm your call and ordain you, the Reverend Alex Jensen, to the Unitarian Universalist Ministry. May you always minister from your whole self, bringing your heart and blood, I might add, and mind, body, and spirit to the work. May you speak, with tr speak the truth with compassion and fire. May you demonstrate humility, curiosity, and courage. May you minister with love, justice, and compassion foremost. May you listen and understand what vulnerable truths people may share and find beauty in the broken places. May you know yourself to be one piece of the creation of a faith greater and more full of love than you can imagine. I accept this ordination into Unitarian Universalist ministry with deep gratitude and great joy mindful of its privileges and responsibilities. I pledge to be a minister who cares for hearts and spirits in all stages of life with tenderness, who guides and inspires people to become their best expression of the diverse and fantastic ways that human beings can thrive to bring forth greater justice wherever I go, and to always be guided by a powerful love that exceeds all expectations. Will all others assembled here please add your love and encouragement to this ordination in the chat stream. Alex, we affirm you and send you forth as a minister in our tradition, knowing that we commission you to bring insight, care, inspiration, and a call to action to all whose lives you touch as you nurture our spirits and help heal the world. Alex, as you go forth, know that our support goes with you wherever you may go. Will those gathered please unmute themselves and join a final response of celebration. Amen. 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 Congratulations. Congratulations. Yay. And there was much celebration. <laughs> well, now it's the time for the presentation of gifts. So I will invite my family to come forward representing Mission Peak UU Congregation in Fremont. And I will also invite the intern committee to come forward as well. Alex, 
during the past two years, we, your intern committee, the five of us, have been so lucky to have spent time with you, to learn Zoom with you, <laughs> learning and encouraging, sharing your hopes and concerns, and making our way through an arduous time in the world together. Your graceful charm, your evident tenderness, your quick mind and your good humor, even when we teased you about your Zoom background and accused you of being in a coffee shop, <laughs> have all deeply endeared you to us. We are most thankful for our time together with you and so proud to have been present during this part of the promising future we see for you. We have a little gift. Oh. This is the hardest part about the ordination. On behalf of the community of First Parish in Wayland and your intern committee, it is with deep appreciation and anticipation that we present to you <laughs> this precious stole, a symbol of your ministry. The stole itself is a representation of the beloved community that has held such meaning for you. Its color, suggested by your dear friend Carter Smith, <laughs> its words by your advisor, Dr. Dan McCainan, the chalice, one that holds special meeting for you and Reverend Stephanie, highlighted by a fully inclusive rainbow and sewn with loving care by Stephanie's mother. <laughs> We hope that each time you don this stole, you will be reminded of all the ideals that we have shared during your preparation for ministry and of the love and deep connection you have forged with us, your first congregation. Thank you so much for this. First stole. <laughs> yeah, sure. So, Alex, this stole comes with. We need to use the microphone. So, Alex, I'm here to bestow this this stole that comes from Mission Peak with all of the love of the people there, and. There are a couple of things that I'd like to show for you. Let's show the camera too. <laughs> so, so the stole, of course, has the UU chalice on it, but it also comes with a couple of other lovely things. It shows the trail of your life, and it shows the tree of life. And I would like to show you a, a couple other things. So this is Reverend Alex Jensen, and you have been bestowed the degree of MB. <laughs> And this stole was lovingly woven by Barbara Myers, wow. our, our community minister at um, MPUUC. Thank so, you. There you Thank go. You. Wow. Thank you, Mom. You're welcome. <laughs> so, I also have a gift that's coming from M <laughs> Mission Peak Universalist Unitarian Church. So um, it's going to be odd, but. Uh, it's the bottom one, and I was I was requested by the congregation to make a chalice. I'm not I'm a metal worker, so I get to do that for my son. I also made him the one he's probably got on right now, which is another little <laughs> chalice. So <laughs> sorry about this. I was I didn't realize we we're doing this. So. <laughs> But anyway, love you much. Speaking to the mic, Dad. <laughs> love you much. This has been made for you. Thank you. So, Thank you, Dad. I'm going to take it. Yeah. I will. And I would like to say that this has been a, a a wonderful, unique kind of experience 
uh, one brings, one tries to pass on to the next generation, whatever one really values. And uh, we did it, but we had no idea what would grow from it. <laughs> no idea at all, but boy, that's all right. <laughs> Thank you, family. Right? I was born to tend this flame. Ancestors danced and sang. What seeds now must I sow? and make it rain what anchor must i hold oh my love it's time to know Well, hello, everyone. What a beautiful service so far. The music, the words, those gifts. I have to say, Reverend Dyer's message was just perfect. It's an incredible honor for me to be participating in the ordination of Reverend Alex Jensen today. I had the privilege of walking with Alex during his high school years as he was just beginning to discern this odd and wondrous call to the ministry. 
I wondered then, as I watched him doing ministry so naturally already as a teen, where this would all unfold. And of course, I still wonder, but I think we're starting to get a pretty good idea that he is exactly where he needs to be and doing exactly what he is supposed to be doing. But I also know that the road he has chosen to walk is a hard one. And that the only thing that makes it easier is knowing that you are not walking it alone. The ritual of laying on of hands has many meanings, but it is undeniably a sign of interconnection and support. As we prepare to share our love, our hope and trust, our faith and spirit energy with Alex, I want to invite a few people and groups into this laying on of hands ritual. First of all, and what a fun pleasure it is for me to invite Alex's family to join us, his parents, Bob and Lucienne, his brother, Ryan, as well as his grandparents, Torch and Dan. Yes, please stand up and lay your hands on Alex, right on his strong shoulders, or if you need to on someone else who already is. Next, I want to invite his internship committee. We saw them already too, Susie and Andy, Natalie, Foster and Lynn. Please take your time and join us as you are physically present. Beautiful. We're going to fill that space. I also want to invite other family and friends of Alex's that are present and who have supported him along the path, some who are physically there, some who are with us digitally, communities from Mission Peak Unitarian Universalist Congregation and from First Parish in Wayland. If you're physically present or if you are on Zoom, reach out your hands make connection, if not with another body, put out your hand and imagine that you are laying your hand right on his shoulders. You're just going to have to get comfortable up there. I think you're all vaccinated. It's okay. And I want to call upon Alex's ancestors, his ancestors of blood, but also of spiritual kinship, beloved friends, all those who are no longer with us in flesh, but whose memories Alex honors with his commitment to a future that none of us will see. Alex, feel all of these hands on you now as well. And finally, whoever you are, wherever you are, let us all reach our hands out and symbolically place them on Alex's shoulder as we bring one hand to our heart and the other reaching forward, symbolically resting on his shoulders. And I invite everyone gathered here to bring all of your energy and all of your attention and focus just for a moment to the beating of your heart, moving that blood through our body, that connective tissue, feeling our hearts beat. Feel now as your breath moves past your nose or lips, as it makes its way down your throat into your lungs and flows into your heart center. Watch with your inner eye as your heart pulses that breath energy out from your center and feel its pulse radiate throughout your body. Feel it in your chest in your arms and legs and all the way to the end of your fingertips and toes and the top of your head. Watching as your heart energy radiates out of your body, 
continuing out into the universe in every direction. Whether physically or not, we are all connected in energy, in love, in breath and in spirit. And now I want you to bring to your mind's eye a vivid image of Alex with as much clarity and detail as you can muster. Imagine him standing right in front of you with your hand resting on his shoulder and feel that energy from your heart radiating towards him, surrounding him and filling his heart. And in your mind, I want you to hold your wishes and intentions your hopes and dreams for Alex and his future ministry. And I want you to let all of your love for him flow right out of your heart and into his, filling him with our combined love. Let us hold this image in our minds of Alex surrounded and protected by all of our love for him. Alex, know that you are never alone. Our hands will always be on your shoulder. And we will always be here for you, just as you are here for us. May it be so. Ashe. Dear Alex, what an immense joy to be with you today and to extend this invitation into the circle of colleagues. Having witnessed your ministry for a number of years now, today is not the first time we have viewed you as a colleague. However, this day does mark a particular passage. This rite of ordination connects you to a great stream of colleagues known and unknown to you, stretching out long behind you and extending far before you, all committed to a life of serving Unitarian Universalism, upholding its principles, living out its values, bound to one another through covenant and calling. We are here today to urge you to choose interdependence over independence, to take your covenant with your colleagues as much to heart as you do your covenant with any congregation or even with Unitarian Universalism itself. Knowing that we share a love for the sacred texts of Harry Potter while acknowledging they were penned through a flawed prophet, we would like to lift up several passages that seem particularly appropriate to our purpose today. From the text of the Chamber of Secrets, it is our choices that show what we truly are, far more than our abilities. You are a great wizard already, Alex, having accomplished so much in such a short time. And yet in addition to continuing to develop your individual abilities, we encourage you to choose to cultivate your collegial relationships. You will find that your colleagues in UU ministry are very much like the houses of Hogwarts, Gryffindors and Ravenclaws, Hufflepuffs and Slytherins, your peers with differing gifts, but common purpose to serve, to support one another and our vision and our values. And as is written in the Goblet of Fire, 
Differences of habit and language are nothing at all if our aims are identical and our hearts are open. You will not always agree with your colleagues. They will sometimes speak and act in ways that are different from your traditions and theology. And yet, remember, we are working toward the same aims and keep your heart open. And you can learn a lot from their differing forms of magic, disarming charms, transfiguration spells, maybe even the occasional bat bogey hex. There is much collective wisdom from which you can learn and to which you can contribute. And from the Sorcerer's Stone, books and cleverness, there are more important things, friendship and bravery. There will be many times when you will need friendship and bravery. Ministry is hard. It can be very lonely. There will be challenges and disappointments and frustrations. And it is incredibly helpful to have a circle of colleagues who can provide listening ears, differing perspectives, understanding, and compassion. And also from the Sorcerer's Stone, it takes a great deal of bravery to stand up to our enemies, but just as much to stand up to our friends. Ah, yes, it will also take bravery to challenge your colleagues sometimes, to ask them to do better, to call them in, to remind them of hard truths, and to have them do the same for you. Bravery and friendship will go a long way toward helping you stand up for your principles and ethics, and to be open to dialogue and discussion and growth, benefiting you your colleagues, and our whole world. And from the Half-Blood Prince, you don't really think you're going to be able to find all those Horcruxes by yourself, do you? There will be times when you will feel singularly superior and capable of doing this challenging work all by yourself. And you will be grateful to find that your colleagues are there for you when you stumble and are humbled. There will be times when your wand has lost its wiggle, when your spells and charms are not working their magic, when you will feel alone and defenseless and your colleagues will be there for you, rising up like Dumbledore's army. And of course, from the Goblet of Fire, we are only as strong as we are united, as weak as we are divided. This does not mean that we will always agree, but that we will strive to live up to our covenanted commitments, staying true to our values and ethics and our vision of the beloved community, calling one another back into relationship whenever possible. Always remember the central message, I know you know, of the sacred texts of Harry Potter. <laughs> Love is the most powerful magic there is. And never forget from the Half-Blood Prince, we're with you, whatever happens. Welcome, dear colleague. <laughs> Reverend. <laughs> so excited to say that. Reverend Alex, in these few minutes, uh, as a colleague who is a few years ahead of you on this path you are embarking upon, I will offer a kind of consolidation of our conversations these past two years. Perhaps think of it as the cliff notes or as you 
uh, suggested Spark Notes <laughs> version of our weekly theological reflection time. First, let's talk about you, the human you, the you who gets tired and grumpy, the you who is renewed by long walks, playing music, and time with friends and family. The you who chose to listen to your longing for religious community as a young teen and listened again for the need for authenticity and went in search for the right religious community for you. Becoming a minister does not eradicate this you. But if you're not careful, it can threaten to eclipse it. And so my first charge to you is this. Care about you. Love yourself with the same attentive, compassionate care I have witnessed you offer to others. Listen to you. Go for walks. Play music. Nurture your friendships, make new ones, perhaps even fall in love. Allow yourself to be loved as you by friends, family, and just yourself. In other words, hang on to the fullness of your humanity. Be the wonderful human that you are and don't make apologies for this. Not when you're sick, not when you're tired and need a break, not when you cannot make a Tuesday night meeting because you have tickets for the symphony or dinner plans with a friend. Being human with your longing for community is what led you on this path. Hang on to that. Hang on to you. And ministry is not about you. <laughs> By definition, to minister is to serve. Thus, becoming a minister is you choosing to serve. Today, you have been ordained to serve as a Unitarian Universalist minister. In the act of ordination, you committed to serving values of caring, of justice, of beloved community, which is to say that you have committed yourself to serving a larger vision of what matters in this world. As the settled minister of the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Grand Traverse in Michigan, you will serve this ordination in a particular context with the people who gather together in covenant in that place. As you know from your internship, the specifics of what this means could be all kinds of things from giving sermons and pastoral visits to hauling chairs or vacuuming the sanctuary, setting up sanctuary tech, or making the occasional pots of coffee. You may be called on for your theological knowledge, yes, but also for your thoughts on the budget or for support organizing a social action campaign or a social event. Through it all, you are serving not only the people of a particular place, but the theological vision of beloved community of Unitarian Universalism. Thus, my second charge to you is this. Hold on to your awareness of your theological grounding. Prioritize your spiritual practices. Have that cup of coffee. Write in your journal. Play your violin. Learn how else you may hold fast to why you minister and how this shows up, not only in Sunday services, but also in committee meetings and in coffee hour conversations. And my final charge is simply this, accept imperfections, your own and others. Sometimes a good enough sermon will be the best sermon because you needed to spend your time elsewhere that week or well, because you're human and got tired. And sometimes, no matter how well you may plan, organize, or anticipate, you may still get it wrong. That's okay. As you know, and as you preach, you do not have to be perfect to be loved, to be part of the beloved community. That means you too. Reverend Alex, 
It has been a privilege and honor to serve as your supervisor. As my first intern and as my pandemic intern, you will always be snug in my heart and thoughts and hopefully in my life. I am so proud to call you a colleague. Now go forth to be the wonderful minister that you already are. Will you pray with me, please? Gracious and loving God, we have gathered this day in your presence to witness the ordination of Alec Jensen. We've gathered on a day in which many of us are tired, many of us are worn from a pandemic that has been going on for 15 months. We gather in late spring and early summer as the temperature rises and as days of leisure stretch on ahead of us the joys of summer. We gather from across our nation and in fact from around the world, knowing that these are perilous times, knowing that the pandemic simply showed all the cracks that were already there, simply made evident the ways that humans are both dependent on one another and on you and the ways in which they terribly aggrieve each other and you. This afternoon, we too renew our vows. Each of us who is an ordained minister knows that at every ordination and every installation, we renew our vows. We remember the ways that we have ministered well, and we remember the ways that we have ministered not as well as we could have, and sometimes quite poorly. As members of congregations, we remember the bonds of community that tie us to this imperfect band, this way of being religious in the world, this way of making sense of the human condition. Renew in each of us the vows that we have taken, the vows that we have taken to see the least among us, to care for the earth and all her creatures, to remember the times when we were powerless and to not hold our power over others. Forgive us for the ways that we have gone astray and bring us back to the vows that we make one to another in moments sacred and profane. Bless Alex, bless his ministry. May he have absorbed all of the words of this service and may he take them to heart for he is a fine minister and he will do many things well and he will also have days of doubt, days of fear, days of regret. Be with him, be with us, that we might in our own time, as well as we can, make upon this earth a more just and fair society, more loving and joyful people. Because we know it matters what we do with our lives. It matters how we are what we say and what we think and what we do. Be with us then and be patient with us that we might be patient with others and that we might add in the span of our lives so much goodness to this world that no evil may withstand it. For the privilege of this service, 
and for all of its participants, we pray. Amen. This is the time that I finally get to say something in the service. And um, words, <laughs> words cannot express what an overwhelming uh, moment this is for me to witness. Uh, my own ordination, uh, being here with all of you, all online, as well as here in person. Um, this has been about a decade of dreaming, preparation, study, and hard work. And together, we have achieved this dream together. And no doubt, even though I stand before you now as an ordained minister wearing a stole, so many of you still remember me as that precocious young teenager that was dead set on making ministry my life's work. So I'm here to say that this dream has been achieved together, and I'm so deeply grateful to each one of you and the many ways that you each have loved me into being. I believe each of us is the product of the support and care that we receive. And so I have you all to really just thank in this moment, to say thank you for loving me into being. Thank you for loving me through the hard times, through the frustrating moments, through, through all of it, through this pandemic. Thank you for loving me into the minister that I am today. So with that note of thanks and gratitude, um, it is my distinct honor that I get to give the benediction to close this service. Uh, this, uh, these words of blessing, this final, uh, this first of many ben uh, benedictions that I will give in my long career ahead of me as an ordained Unitarian Universalist minister. And so the benediction that I have to share with you all is actually a benediction that I use um, each and every Sunday to close a service here at First Parish in Wayland when I'm leading the service. Um, so some of you may find it familiar. So in that spirit of blessing, I say, in the spirit of covenant, community, and commitment, in the spirit of shared ministry, and the numerous ways that we are each called to nurture and sustain life and to minister to this weary world, may we go forth ready to serve one another and to support this world together. Go in peace, friends. May it be so. Amen and blessed be. Pathway with radio 
For those of you in the Bay Area, be sure to join us on the 20th in the afternoon to congratulate Alex in person. Look forward to seeing you then.